This is a tutorial on choosing a linear, quadratic, and exponential model. Before we can talk about how to choose between a linear, quadratic, and exponential model, we have to remember what those models look like. A linear model has the equation of y is equal to mx plus b. Our x here is to the first power, and any points that fit a linear model are always graphed in a straight line. A lot like these blue points or these red ones. Another type of model is a quadratic model. That's always in the form of y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And points that follow a quadratic model are usually shaped in a parabola, a lot like these blue points. It's also important to notice though that many quadratic models only use half of the parabola. So a lot like these red points that are plotted. These still fit a quadratic model, but the points that are represented in this model are only half of the parabola. Now lastly, we have to talk about exponential models. Those are when our variable is an exponent. Those, as we go from negative infinity to positive infinity, on the x-axis, or whatever our variable value is, they either get very small or very close to zero, or very, very large. A lot like these blue and red points. So now that we know what these models look like, let's talk about how we can choose between them if we're given a series of points or a set of data. The first method that we're going to use to figure out what kind of model best fits our data is to graph it. So we're going to choose a model by graphing. Here we're given several points, 0, 0, 1, 500, 2, 1000, and 3, 1500. And we're told that this is the distance traveled by an airplane, where our first point is the amount of time the plane's been flying in hours, and the second point is the amount of miles traveled. So I'm going to plot time on the x-axis, and I'm going to plot the distance on the y-axis, and then I'm just going to plot these four points. 0, 0 is right here at the origin. 1, 500 is right about there. 2, 1000 is there. And 3, 1500 right about there. These points appear to be in a straight line. And I know that linear models, when you graph those points, those are in a straight line. So I'm going to guess that the distance traveled by an airplane, or at least this airplane, is going to be representing a linear model. Now I can find my linear model. It looks like y is equal to mx plus b. I need to find my slope first, so I'm going to pick two points. I'm going to pick 0, 0 and 1, 500, and I'm going to use the slope formula, where m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'm going to pick this as my second point, and this one is my first. And I'll get my slope to be 500 minus 0 over 1 minus 0. So my slope is 500. Now b is my y-intercept, and I can see from my graph that that occurs at 0. So my b is equal to 0. So my linear model then is just y is equal to 500 times x. Or if you want to, since this is time, we can think of that as y is equal to 500 t. Now there's a second method that we can use to choose between a linear, quadratic, and exponential model. And this is by just finding a pattern in the data. So here again we have the same data of the distance traveled by some airplane. The way to figure this out is to look at just the x and y values. 
So my x values in this case are 0, 1, 2, and 3. My y values are 0, 500, 1000, and 1500. Now if you're going to recognize a pattern in your data, you first have to look at your x values. Your x values need to increase by addition through the same amount. So from 0 to 1, we're adding 1. From 1 to 2, we're adding 1. And from 2 to 3, we're adding 1. So my x values do increase by a constant amount through addition, which means now I just have to look for a pattern in my y values. My y values from 0 to 500, I have to add. I cannot multiply because you can't multiply 0 by anything and get anything other than 0. So this is an addition of 500. Now between 500 and 1000, that's another addition of 500. And from 1000 to 1500, that's another addition of 500. This difference of 500 between each one of our y values is called our first order differences. Remember, a linear model is y is equal to mx plus b. Now this x is to the first power. So if your first order differences, or you're adding by the same amount between each y value, that means that this fits a linear model. Now I just find my linear model by the same way I did before. I'm going to find my slope. I'm going to choose this as point in 1. And 1 500 is point 2. My slope will be equal to 500 minus 0 over 1 minus 0. So my slope is 500. I plug that in. I get y is equal to 500 x plus b. Now I pick any of these points, plug them in for x and y and solve for b. I'm going to pick my first point, 0, 0. I'll plug in 0 for y. That's equal to 500 times 0 for x plus b. 500 times 0 is just 0, so we'll end up with b equaling to 0. So my model then is just y is equal to 500x. So we got the same answer as before, but we didn't have to graph it. You're just looking for a constant change in your y values, or a pattern in how your y values change.